So for a coach that's in that early stage, maybe they're doing their Bachelor of Sports Science, um, doing their Masters, or they're, they're cutting their teeth in a program, uh, how do you get that balance right? Like how many hats w- would you have worn at one time? You know, you're spending time at Essendon, or you're working at BIS, or you're doing a bit of PT. Talk us through sort of how do you yeah. get the balance right of making money while also climbing a ladder and then finishing your degree as well? I guess this is where the balance is gone, though. So um, time management and work ethic, really, it comes down to, like, what do you want to achieve and where do you want to be? And it's, it's like anything. It, it's competitive out there. And those that are willing to put in the time, effort and energy um, and have that strong drive and willpower will be the ones that sort of succeed in the long run because um, it's not easy. At the start, you do have to wear a lot of hats and you do have to take up a lot of small opportunities to get the right one that will come eventually. Um, And look, you know, it's still now, like even at the top, like we're still developing concepts, ideas and and growth for the business to get it to to the next level. Um, So it's never ending. You need more hats uh, than you think. And I think it's okay to be a bit more of a jack of all trades, dare I say it, rather than specialist in one area. For coaches that uh, have had some setbacks, um, what are some of the most important things that you think going into interview preparation um, is like, what are your, sort of your top three tips for preparing yourself to be successful or putting yeah. your best foot forward, I guess? Good one. Um, I, think, I think one thing that just goes without saying is just natural confidence. Um, and I think with our industry, like one thing that you can do that it doesn't matter how much you know or don't know is, you can actually expose yourself to what we do. We, you can go train. You can go put time into the gym. You can go mm. put time on the track. You can go. Uh, you can go buy a coach, buy a program, train at a facility, train with other people. So I think like having confidence in having knowing what athletes actually go through. No matter like when you're getting to job interviews, you've had three to four years at university before that. It's a great opportunity to expose yourself to the industry from the athlete side that when you get to these interviews, you're going to feel a lot more confident in expressing yourself about your passions for it. For coaches that have, that um, have that same sort of goal in mind at the moment, what, what are some of your favorite ways to develop your network, I guess, in a uh, professional manner as well? Um, yeah. I that's think sustainable. A, a real simple one to start now is, is like uh, coach workshops events. It's like a, a really great place to start. Um, it, it, it's really casual, brings the, the environments down. Uh, and normally the place you go to, they're willing to go above and beyond after you've been there and paid your money to assist mm. you. So if you show something in that environment, um, they're going to go above and beyond if you ask them a question later and remember you as a person because you've invested in their company. So I think that's a really simple, easy one. Um, a little bit of the investment there. Trying to get exposure to like the best people in our industry is you got to look at where they are. And there are some really high level coaches that present at events and or they um, help run workshops for ASCA and things too. So going to those events and workshops, you can then network with the best coaches in the industry. What would be some of your key pillars when a new athlete walks into the into the facility team MFP? Yeah, um, I think I, I wrote a couple of notes about a couple of key things to do with what athletes need to um, work on. And one of the big things that stuck out for me when I was going through that question was, I think it'd be, it's really important um, for an athlete to, uh, to A, just understand about mental and mindset training and the the capabilities of the human mind, because I feel like at the moment, uh, the ability to stay on task um, and to do simple things well, is a skill that, a lot of young people don't have the capacity to do as much anymore. And I think it does come back a little bit to technology, social media, and the fast paced world that we're living in, um, you know, with the scrolling and so forth and not being able to be attentive to simple little things. So um, it's definitely something that a lot of young athletes will need to be uh, acknowledging and parents potentially as well that um, learning to be mindful 